Good afternoon, angels. This is Mike Angel here, and you are in the Mopar Review. Today's review, we're going to be going over Mopar, pretty much how it came to be, the history of Mopar, how it came up to be, how the word Mopar came to existence and how Mopar got so big in the community bringing all kinds of people together no matter where you're from the color of your skin what you do how you speak where you're from man, it doesn't matter none of that uh, pretty much we all share the same love of our Mopar cars our Challengers Chargers Dodge Daytona so on and so forth and Durango's and stuff like that and just the love of cars just brings us together and bonds us together and that is what this review is going to be about pretty much the bringing of the Mopar. So where did Dodge come from? Founded as the Dodge Brothers Company machine shop by brothers Horace Elgin Dodge and John Francis Dodge in the early 1900s. Dodge was originally a supplier parts of assemblies for Detroit based automakers and began building complete automobiles under the Dodge Brothers brand in 1914 predating the founding of Chrysler Corporation. The factory was located in Hammond, Michigan and was called the Dodge Main Factory from 1910 until its closing in January 1980. The Dodge brothers both died in 1920 and the company was sold by their families to Dylan, Reed and Co. in 1925 before being sold to Chrysler in 1928. John Francis Dodge was born in October 25th, 1864, while his brother Horace Elgin Dodge arrived four years later on, on May 17, 1868. John Dodge, who with his brother Horace co-founder the Dodge Brothers Company, which was once America's third largest automaker and later became part of Chrysler. So the brothers, four years apart came together and they started off building bicycles yes you heard of bicycles I see you'll see the video right now this is a video from Dodge Company uh, they made this commercial video I'm pretty sure most of you guys seen it here it is the Dodge Brothers when they start off with their bike The Dodge Brothers' competitive spirit and engineering prowess started long before they built their first car and will continue long after their latest. So as you can see it, Dodge started off with, with their bikes and from there they moved up and they started working for Ford for over, like oh, around 10-13 years. So they worked for Ford Motors for 10-13 years and there they made engines and other auto parts for the Ford Motors Company and for Old Motors Works. In 1913 they began producing their own automobiles and the first Dodge automobile appeared on November 14, 1914, Model 30, 35 Touring Cars. Also in 1916 the Dodge Brothers vehicles won a claim for durability while in the service with the U.S. Army. And as you guys can see it right now, the U.S. Army, as you can see this right here, they, that you can tell the Derby going through the water, going through the mud. Man, these cars were, these pretty much trucks, they were, it was actually called the Power Wagon. As you can see, these Power Wagons going through the mud, going through the waters, going through the little lakes and rivers here. And you can see the durability that, that why the military trusted Dodge vehicles. But that's not all. Dodge wanted to push the, the Ford T cars or the T model cars, they wanted to push that a little bit more and actually build automobiles on the field and it was really really reliable even for the US Army and then from there the Dodge Brothers started their new company and they just began just producing producing for the military and also for the community and from there it just went on and on and they started developing all these makes and models and 
reliable, durable cars for everyone to have. Also, the brothers, they worked for Ford for uh, roughly 10, 12, roughly 10 to 13 years until they quit around Ford models around 1912, 1913, and then from there producing their own automobiles. And as you guys can see, by 1914, the Dodge brothers quit the Ford Motor Company and set out on their own. They believed in more than the assembly line. They believed driving was a holy endeavor. A hundred years later, the Dodge brothers' spirit lives on. And their success, like their success started skyrocketing and they were in the verge of success. They were doing well, extremely well. And in January 1920, the Dodge brothers attended a New York auto show. While in that show, both of the brothers were striking by pneumonia. Tragically, while Horace survived, John died in January 14, 1920. Horace was devastated by the loss and never recovered, following his beloved brother in death on December. 10, 1920. As you can see, I mean, their legacy did not die in 1920. It just continued from there on to this very day. And the love of the Dodge brothers continued and to rage on. And from there, it just made everything a lot better. And then I thank them for actually doing this such a thing. And I can relate a little bit with my brother. And we are three years apart. And I started off with the 2012 Dodge Challenger, which you see right behind me. And he started with Ford. He wanted to get the Mustang. He, that was his thing. He wanted the 5.0 Mustang. He wanted the standard Boss Edition. And he wanted that Mustang. And surprisingly, surprisingly, he got this beast right <laughs> Here, as you guys can see it and he is enjoying it the hell out of it. he enjoys the Mopar community now finally I brought my brother my finally I brought my brother to the Mopar side it took it took me a couple years for a moment he was driving an f-150 uh, pickup truck and then from there he switched it out to I think it was a 4.6 liter f-150 also single cab and then from there he wanted to trade it in for the Mustang and he had two choices the Mustang or the 2012 Dodge Challenger Hemi Orange 6 speed manual transmission. Been enjoying his life on that Mopar ride. So, me and my brother relate real well. And just like the brothers, as you can see here in this video. And here it is, their commercial video. I'm pretty sure most of you guys seen it, but if you haven't, here it is. The Dodge video of Dodge Brothers Company, pretty much always pushing each other and trying to strive each other to do better and that's what we're doing uh, I wanted I wanted to get that 392 Hemi but he beat me to it and now I got a little surprise for him later on down the road as you guys can see the video here the Dodge Brothers always pushing each other always striving to do better and here it is John and Horace Dodge launched their first car in 1914. But they were not only business partners, they were brothers. Competitive, stubborn, and always pushing each other the way only brothers can. video was beautiful it just resembles pretty much kind of me and my brother and most of all of our families pretty much most pretty much everyone calls us the Dodge brothers why because we both have Dodge we both have the challengers they tell my mom uh, you you're the challenger mother huh <laughs> they pretty much tell her that or where's your Dodge brothers so we're the Dodge brothers stuff like that and 
it is just such a good feeling to hear that you know hey look at the Dodge Brothers right here look at this look at that look at those Dodge Brothers and I feel like I'm a part of that family there and that's why I love the Mopar community because it brings everybody together and we just share the love and spirit of the Mopar so going back to the conversation Mopar um, as you see the little history of the Dodge Brothers how it came up to be it's just a little bit here and there uh, there's still a lot more to it but I just give you a little brief history of the Dodge Brothers and how they came up and how uh, tragically their time ended before their time and this is a video pretty much how the Mopar came to be and also the Mopar where did that term come from it was first used by the Chrysler in 1920s and was introduced as a brand starting in 1937 Mopar parts are originally equipped manufactured parts for Chrysler vehicles the term Mopar was passed into broader use among the car enthusiasts as an ambiguous reference to the parent company where did the name Mopar come from the word Mopar was first used in 1920s by the Chrysler Corporation the obvious may come to mind Mopar stands for motor parts but think about it for a second if you just go to an all Chrysler Dodge or Plymouth car show over the weekend it's all Mopar motor parts it's just motor parts everywhere I'm pretty sure uh, just like uh, breakfast and lunch you know brunch a couple of car guys came together and their motor parts here I need more motor parts here and then out of nowhere boom someone came out with Mopar so what does the word Mopar stand for Mopar is a part service and customer care organization within Fiat Chrysler automobiles yes Fiat is in the picture now Mopar also designs and builds a small number of customized vehicles the name drives from a combination of letters from the word motor and parts the MO on motor and the PAR on parts just put them together smash them together boom Mopar there you guys have it the word Mopar they have that question is Chrysler a Dodge well first of all Fiat owns Alfa Romeo Chrysler Dodge Ferrari Jeep Lentia Maserati Ram and SRT Ford Motors Company owns Lincoln a small stakes of Mazda General Motors owns Buick Cadillac Chevrolet and GMC so yeah you can say since Chrysler bought uh, Dodge Brothers Company back in 1928 well you can say yes it is a big part of the Mopar family and then also is Plymouth a Mopar and we'll get that there very soon all right I go to a lot of car shows here and there and we get together and you know other groups other people you know that are not too familiar with the branding and the Dodge you know what does SRT stand for SRT 8 stand for what does SRT 10 stand for what does RT stand for what does, S what does SXT stand for what does SE stand for well it's just a little bridges here and there saying the different parts of the car you know like the SC SXT being the B6 the RT being a 5.7 liter Hemi uh, SRT being the 6.1 or the 6.4 liter with a hemisphere on what does the SRT a stand for SRT well first of all SRT began as Team Viper to develop the Dodge Viper and later merged with Team Prowler, the developers of Plymouth Prowler, to become Specialty Vehicle Engineering SVE. This was renamed as Performance Vehicles Operations PVO. Since all PVO vehicles use the SRT name, the PVO developer group was renamed SRT in 2004. SRT heavily tunes and produces vehicles for the Chrysler Dodge and Jeep brands. SRT8 emblem. The SRT stands for Street and Racing Technology, commonly called SRT. It's a high, high performance automobile group within Fiat Chrysler Automotives. The SRT10 emblem. All right, this is where the difference comes from. Man. It's very simple though. A V engine or VEE engine is a common configuration 
for an internal combustion engine. The cylinders and pistons are aligned in two separate planes or banks, whichever you may call it. So they appear in a V when viewed along the axis of the crankshaft. A V10 is a V engine with 10 cylinders in two banks of five. It is a longer, it is longer than the V8, but shorter than the straight six or the B12 engine. Usually the emblems used to be SRT8 with an eight on it, indicating that it was a V8 engine. Four pistons on one bank and four pistons on the other bank. The Viper is a V10 engine. It has 10 cylinders, five in each bank. Five pistons in one bank and five pistons in the other bank and they're aligned in the V form when viewed along the axis of the crankshaft. So, here comes a question again. Is Plymouth a Mopar? Well, since Plymouth got together to develop the Team Viper and from and Plymouth is the restoration performance parts of accessories in 1960 through 76 Dodge and Plymouth Mopar models. Whether it is a Charger, a Challenger, a Barracuda, Belvedere, Fury, or Pelora, Dar, Daytona, or Roadrunner, or Satellite Classic Industries has the parts for your 1960 through 76 Mopar A body, B body, or even E body. What does RT stand for? RT is a performance maker used to on Dodge automobiles since the 1960s, which like Chevrolet Super Sport SS, RT stands for Road Track. No ands in between. A lot of people say road and track, but there's no and in between. It's just road and track. But not the and in between, just road track. That's it. RT models come with RT badging, upgraded suspension, tires, brakes, and more powerful engines. What does SE stand for? Well, SE was developed on the Dodge Chunk. Dodge is a brand vehicle while SE denotes the standard extra. Or SXT, specific exterior trim, package of the vehicles. For instance, a 2014 Dodge Charger might come in SE or SXT, but what is a Mopar muscle car? When you think of a muscle car, the first car that comes in mind or even comes pretty much in everybody's mind, no matter if you're a Dodge, a Chevy, or Ford, when you think of a muscle car, the first muscle car that really appears in your mind, I'll give you a couple seconds. There you guys have it. The Dodge Charger, I would say, is probably the king of muscle cars. It's the first thing that pops out in any website, in any little thing. You just Google it, Google muscle cars, and the Dodge Charger is always going to be there. So, muscle car. What is a muscle car? Muscle car is an American term used to refer a variety of high-performance automobiles. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines a muscle car as any group of American-made two-door sport cars with powerful engines designed for high-performance driving. So there you guys have it. A little history of the Mopar community, how Mopar came to be, how Mopar actually came to be and became Mopar, you know, motor parts, and from there Mopar sprouted to be Mopar. But that's the thing that I love about the Mopar community. The Mopar community, the forums, everything. They're really, really, really friendly and communicate really well with their customers. And they're such a great help and inspiration for people like me that are Mopar fans. And to be honest, ever since I bought this car, I did not know anything past 2012 I did not know anything about the new Dodge Challengers the only thing I knew about it was pretty much the 1960s to 70 around 74 so that's pretty much the only thing I knew about the Dodge Challenger especially the e-body Dodge Challenger and the Plymouth Barracuda those are my go-to favorite classic cars and that is the reason why I bought this Challenger because it resembled the e-body of the Dodge Challenger in 1970 and 74 Plymouth Barracuda and that is why I fell in love with this car at first sight and I had to have it the Dodge brothers they weren't no they weren't normal they want they didn't want it they didn't want to settle for just normal they wanted to exceed to advance become better 
than anybody else. It's pretty much that's a wrap and stay tuned for the next video. We are going to be reviewing the upcoming reviews. I'm going to review the V6 models from 2012 through 2014 and then also the B6 models from 2015 through 2019 and we're going to be reviewing the little gimmicks here and there the upgrades from the 2012 all the way through the 2019 on the B6 models and from there we're going to do reviews also on the RT models from 2012 all the way till up to date and we're going to be going through the automatics and the standard transmissions and also the SRT, the SRT8s from 2012 all the way to the SRT models up to date and we're going to be going through again automatic transmissions versus manual transmissions so stay tuned for those we're going to have a lot of content a lot a lot of content from all the all SRT models RT models and SXT models and also a little history of the Dodge Challenger, Charger, Dart, Dusters, Daytona, and Jeep Cherokee, even the Durango, and so much more. So stay tuned guys, hopefully you enjoyed this little history video of the Dodge Brothers and how Mopar came up to be, and hopefully you enjoyed it, and it was very uh, educational for you, and hopefully you enjoyed the video, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you are stopping in for the first time, please hit that subscribe button and that little chingandero bell that you see on the side of the subscribe button. Please click, click that for the upcoming review. So stay tuned. Have a blissful day and see you on the next video. today they'd be pretty impressed with what's become of their maverick car company with all the power performance and ingenuity but knowing them they'd insist on serving the donuts get yours before